Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Today is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming back for this morning's Bible study. I pray everyone is doing well. Today, we are up to Job chapter 15. And Eliphaz responds to Job. So I'm going to say Eliphaz steps back into the ring today um, and addresses Job. So from my opinion, from my standpoint, I think that means we can expect some sort of uh, insult or dig or something like that today, right? To be hurled at Job. So I can't wait to read this to you. We have a good amount of verses today. This chapter is 35 verses so I can't chit chat too long today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I can't chit chat too much today because we have 35 verses to get through in the Amplified and then in the message. So we'll see what Eliphaz has to say today. I'm sure it won't be pretty, it won't be kind, but um, we already know what's going on with, this, with uh, Job's quote unquote friends, right? Okay, so we're gonna pray. We're gonna jump right into this. I just wrote down four verses in my notes today. I pray all is well with you. All right, give me one second. This is, let me get myself together here. All right, let's pray and then let's get into this. I can't wait to read this with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you for the gift of another day. Father, I thank you for sweet sleep last night, Lord. I thank you that you have assembled us here this morning to hear the reading of your word. God, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to read the word of God with your children. Father, I pray that you will fine tune our ears to you today, Lord. Father, open up our spirits and our hearts to receive from you, Lord. I pray that we will understand and be able to take things out of the word today that we have never seen before. Help us to apply the word of God to our lives, Lord. Father, let everything that we say, do, think, and become, let it be pleasing in your sight. Lord, I pray that you will cause our lives to be in divine alignment with your perfect and holy will for us, O oh God. Cause us to operate in divine timing. Lord, I ask for divine wisdom, that you will increase our level of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, insight, and foresight, Lord. Father, we lift up our family members and we ask that you continue to cover them, watch over them. Lord, I pray for safe travel and mercies for all of us. Keep us from all accidents seen and unseen as we go about our day to day. Keep us from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Father, we ask that you keep a hedge of protection around the children everywhere, all over the globe. Father, I pray that you will anoint their day, anoint their minds for learning, give them a love of education. Father, let us all be learners each and every day when we wake up, oh God. Father, cause us to learn something new. Father, let us never stop and let us never cease to learn new things. Father, always allow us to increase in wisdom, increase in prosperity, increase in knowledge. Father, increase in kindness, increase in love. Father, let increase be our portion each and every day of our lives. Father, I pray that you will bless the works of our hands. Help us to grow our businesses, establish businesses, oh God, create multiple streams of income that will never run dry. Lord, I just pray that you will have a divine, you will cause a divine alignment in everything that we do. And Father, for anyone who needs it, or everyone who needs a healing in their body, Father, I pray today that you will bless us and heal us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, I pray that you will bless us physically, emotionally, mentally, psychologically, Logically, however we need it, oh God, I pray that you will cause healing to come, Lord. Father, let peace be our portion. Let peace fill our relationships, our homes. Let joy be our portion, oh God. Let us always keep a smile on our face. Father, cause us to always be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, Lord God. And Father, I pray for a divine separation from the wrong people, places, and things. Cause us to have the discernment and wisdom to know when it's time to exit a situation of a relationship, a business deal. Whenever the door has closed and whenever a season has ended, Lord, I pray that you will give us the wisdom and the knowledge, the understanding and the strength to turn away from those things that are no, no more serving us, no more in divine timing, that, that they're not ordained for the season of our lives. Oh God, Father, just give us the wisdom and the knowledge. Father, cause us to 
just operate according to the perfect plan that you have for us. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to read this word today. I pray, Lord, that you will give each and every one of us a fresh understanding and revelation of your word today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, family. Oh, so good when I see my family and I, and I, Kimberly, you know, I count you in my family. Um, when I see my family on here with me and we are up to Job chapter 15 today, I'm going to ring the bell, ding, 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 because Eliphaz steps back into the ring to speak to Job. And we know that that's going to come complete with some sort of insult or dig, right? And so we're going to start out with the Amplified Bible this morning. We got 35 verses to get through. So I'm just going to go right from the Amplified over to the message. And then I'll share the verses that I have in my notes this morning. Good morning. All right. So the title here in the Amplified says, Eliphaz the Temanite answered Job and said, here we go. Should a wise man such as you utter such windy and vain knowledge as we have just heard right out the box with the insult and fill himself with the east wind of withering, parching and violent accusations? Should he rebuke and argue with useless talk or with words in which there is of no benefit? Indeed, you are doing away with fear and you are diminishing meditation before God for your guilt teaches your mouth. And you choose to speak the language of the crafty and cunning. Your own mouth condemns you and not I. Your lips testify against you. Were you the first man to be born the original wise man? Or were you created before the hills? Do you hear the secret counsel of God? And do you limit the possession of wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we don't know? What do you understand that is not equally clear to us? Among us are both the gray-haired and the aged, older than your father. Are the consolations of God as we have interpreted them to you too trivial for you? Or were we too gentle toward you in our first speech to be effective? I don't think so. Why does your heart carry you away, allowing you to be controlled by emotion? And why do your eyes flash in anger or contempt? That you should turn your spirit against God and let such let such words as you, as you have spoken go out of your mouth. What is man that he should be pure and clean or he who is born of a woman that he should be righteous and just? Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, angels. Indeed, the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less pure and clean is the one who is repulsive and corrupt? Man who drinks unrighteousness and injustice like water. Good morning on Instagram. What Eliphaz has seen of life. I will tell you, listen to me. And what I have seen, I will also declare. What wise men have freely told and have not hidden anything passed on to them from their fathers. To whom alone the land was given and no stranger passed among them corrupting the truth. The wicked man writhes with pain all his days and the numbered and numbered are the years stored up for him, the ruthless one, a dreadful sound of terrors in his ears. While at peace and in a time of prosperity, the destroyer comes upon him. The tent of robber is not at peace. He does not believe that he will return out of the darkness for fear of being murdered. And he is destined for the sword of God's vengeance. He wanders about for food saying, where is it? He knows that the day of darkness and destruction is already at hand. Distress and anxiety terrify him. They overpower him like a king ready for battle. Because he has stretched out his hand against God and behaves arrogantly against the Almighty, running and charging headlong against him with his ornamented and massive shield, or ornamented, I'm sorry, ornamented and massive shield. But he has covered his face with his fat, adding layers of fat to his thighs, giving himself up to pleasures. And he has lived in desolate, God forsaken cities, in houses which no one should inhabit which were destined to become heaps of ruins. 
He will not become rich, nor will his wealth endure. And his grain will not bend to the earth, nor his possessions be extended on the earth. He will not escape from darkness, fleeing disaster. The flame of God's wrath will wither his branch. And by the blast of his mouth, he will go away. Let him not trust in vanity, emptiness, futility, and be led astray. For emptiness will be his reward for such living. It will be fulfilled while he still lives and his branch will not be green, but shall wither away. He will fail to bring his grapes to maturity, leaving them to wither unnourished on the vine and will cast off blossoms and fail to bring forth fruit like the olive tree. For the company of the godless is barren and fire consumes the tents of bribery, wrong and injustice. They conceive mischief and bring forth wickedness and their inmost soul prepares deceit and fraud. Amen and amen. And that con that concludes um, Job chapter 15. That was the Amplified Bible. All right, let's go over here to the message. Now the message title says Eliphaz attacks again. I like that. I think that's accurate. And then it says you trivialize religion. Eliphaz of Temin spoke a second time. If you were truly wise, would you sound so much like a windbag belching hot air? Would you talk nonsense in the middle of a serious argument, babbling baloney? Look at you. You trivialize religion, turn spiritual conversation into empty gossip. It's your sin that it taught you to talk this way. You chose an education in fraud. Your own words have exposed your guilt. It's nothing I've said. You've incriminated yourself. Do you think you're the first person to have to deal with these things? Have you been around as long as the hills? Were you listening in when God planned all this? Do you think you're the only one who knows anything? What do you know that we don't know? What insights do you have that we've missed? Gray beards and white hair backs us up. Old folks who've been around a lot longer than you. Are God's promises not enough for you? Spoken so gently and tenderly. Why do you let your emotions take over, lashing out and spitting fire, pitting your whole being against God by letting your words like this come out of your mouth? Do you think it's possible for any mere mortal to be sinless in God's sight? For anyone born of a human mother to get it all together? Why God can't even trust his holy angels. He sees the flaws in the very heavens themselves. So how much less we humans, smelly and foul, who lap up evil like water. Always at odds with God, verse 17. I have a thing or two to tell you, so listen up. I'm letting you in on my views. It's what wise men and women have always taught, holding nothing back from what they were taught by their parents back in the days when they had this land all to themselves. Those who live by their own rules, not God's, can expect nothing but trouble. What are you saying, Eliphaz? Here we go. And the longer they live, the worse it gets. Every little sound terrifies them just when they think they haven't made disaster strikes. They despair of things ever getting better. They're on the list of people for whom things always turn out, the worst, out for the worst. They wander here and there, never knowing where the next meal is coming from. Every day is doomsday. They live in constant terror, always with their backs up against the wall, because they insist on shaking their fists at God, defying God Almighty to his face, always and ever at odds with God, always on the defensive. Even if they're the picture of health, trim and fit and youthful, they end up living in a ghost town, sleeping in a hotel not fit for a dog, a ram shackle shack. They'll never get ahead, never amount to much of anything. And then death. Don't think they'll escape that. They'll end up shriveled weeds brought down by a puff of God's breath. There's a lesson here. Whoever invests in lies gets lies for interest. Paid in full before the due date. Some investment, they'll be like fruit frost killed before it ripens, like buds sheared off before the bloom. The godless are fruitless, a barren crew. A life built on bribes goes up in smoke. 
They have sex with sin and give birth to evil. Their lives are wounds for breeding deceit. Amen and amen. Good morning. And that concludes Job chapter 15 in the message translation, in the message Bible. So this is pretty harsh. No surprises there, right? We knew that he was going to come out swinging, that there was going to be some sort of accusation and some further insults hurled at Job. And he delivered exactly what I expected. So I think this title here in the message, Eliphaz Attacks Again, is exactly right. You know, again, let's see what, what you're saying. This is a friend. Don't need enemies. That's right. Who needs enemies when you have a, a friend to like just tear into you like this? This is just awful. This is awful. But I'm, tell, I'm telling you, my response would have been, please pick up your mat and go home, guys. Because I just don't have the time and the patience to deal with all of this foolishness that you're hurling at me. But we see that he sits here and they have this back and forth. I don't have the patience for this. All right. I just want to just, just, I'm telling you, I just want to jump in here on Job's defense on his behalf. I just can't even take it. All right. So what do I have in my notes? I have verse three here. I'm back on the Amplify page. Should he rebuke and argue with useless talk or with words in which there is no benefit? So I wrote in my notes here, he's basically saying, this is a waste of time. Listening to you is a complete waste of time because you have nothing of benefit to say here. And the message says, um, you know, he says he's talking nonsense, babbling baloney. Look at you. You trivialize religion. You turn spiritual conversation into empty gossip. He says empty gossip. It's your sin. Here we go with the accusation that, that Job has some great sin here. It's your sin that taught you to talk this way. You chose an education in fraud. So here in the Amplifies, it says, you chose to speak the language of the crafty and the cunning. Your own mouth condemns you and not I. Yes, your own lips testify against you. So, you know, as I was reading this again today, I'm thinking there had to be some sort of jealousy. There's something hidden here. I just can't fathom that you could attack a friend when they have suffered all that Job has suffered and just come out and attack your friend at the lowest time and point of their lives, right? But we know that Job was blameless. He was, uh, he had a prayer life with God. He wanted to make sure everybody was in great standing with God. He was a man of affluence. He was a man of influence. And so I just have to question, was there jealousy going on, right? I just, I, I can't wrap my head around this. Okay. So verse Three, to me, he's basically saying, you know, you're wasting your time and you're wasting our time with all of this nonsense that you're spewing because we all know, look, look, Job, let's just be real here. We all know that you're sinning. We all know that this is your fault. You brought this on yourself, right? And then if you listen to the other friend, your children, your, your children were sinning so bad that they caused their own death. They brought that on themselves as well. The whole household, right? Like it's like, it's like the whole bunch of you, the whole household of you, all of you are sinners. All right, so then we have verse eight here. Do you hear the secret counsel of God and do you limit the possession of wisdom to yourself? Are you the only wise one, Job? Do you think you're the only person of wisdom? See, this is the dig here. Now where I start to say, were you jealous, really jealous of all that Job was, this great man, right? You think you're the only wise one? You think what? You think you're the only one? You're the only one in possession of wisdom, just you and you alone? That was verse eight. Let's go over here to the message. Uh, he, it says here, do you think you're the only one who knows anything? You think you're so smart, Job? If you were so smart, you wouldn't be in this position. Then it goes on in nine. What do you know that we don't know? What do you understand that is not equally clear to us? So what I picked up in my notes was now, if you, we go back to chapter 13 and verse two, that was the same response that Job, or the same statement, pretty much a sentiment that Job expressed to them, right? In 13 and two, he says, what you know, I also know. I'm not inferior to you. 
So now we have this back and forth of who's smart, who's wise, who knows more than who. I'm smart. You're not so smart. You're not smarter than me. You think you're smarter than me, but you don't know any more than me. Who do you think you are? So this is the back and forth, right? So we have a little battle about who's wiser, about who's wise, this uh, wisdom conflict here. Uh, the constellations of God as we have interpreted them to, to you, too trivial for you. Now, this, this one gets me right here. Or were we too gentle toward you in our first speech to be effective? Now, that's foolishness. They were so harsh and cruel, you know? So the, this, this dig here, or were we too gentle? Or were you too clueless to pick up what we were putting down? Joe, did you not get what, did you really not understand what we were saying to you? Are you not getting the gist of what we're telling you? Huh. Why does your heart carry you away, allowing you to be controlled by emotions? And why do your eyes flash in anger and contempt? So when I read this right here, I said, well, you know, when I'm, when I'm reading this to you, right, when we get to a crazy part, I go, right? I flash my eyes because I'm like, I just can't believe this. So it says, why do you flash? Why do your eyes flash in anger or contempt? Because this is foolishness, what you're doing to me. This is pure foolishness, what you're saying to me. I can see why his eyes would flash in anger and contempt. I have to sit here and put up with your nonsense. So yeah, I could understand. I flash my own eyes when I read this stuff. That you should turn your spirit against God and let such words if you have spoken go out of your mouth. What is man that he should be pure and clean? And I think if I remember correctly... Job said something like this in one of his um, speeches as well, right? Talking about man. Um, yeah, this this is a, this is a lot. And then he goes on down here, and he says, now he's going to give him his whole um, speech about what he's what he has seen in life, right? He's going to share some more quote unquote wisdom with Job and get him straight, get him all together here. I will tell you, listen to me and what I have seen, I will also declare. But in here, right, there's more digs. And so as I'm reading this, I'm like, all right, is this really what you've heard, what has been passed down to you? Or are you really sneaking in your own sentiments in here as you continue to dig at him? And here he's talking about the wicked man writes with pain all his days and the numbered are the years stored up for him, the ruthless one, right? Again, so it's kind of to me a dig saying, Job, you wicked man, now you're in pain. And, and numbered are the years stored up for him, the ruthless one. You're going to reap what you sow, right? Because that's what they were saying to him in the beginning. <sighs> this is just too much. A dreadful sound of terrors in his ears while at peace and in a time of prosperity, this destroyer comes upon him. All right. I didn't have any any um, of these verses in the second half of this in my notes. I just have to shake my my head at this. Down here at verse 25, because he has stretched out his hand against God and behaves ag arrogantly against the almighty. Job wasn't really arrogant you know, in his relationship with God. This is why he's in the position that he's in because he was such a, a an upstanding man, blameless, right? So again, I feel like in the midst of this, they're just hurling more, um, he's hurling more digs at Job and wrong, wrong in his assessment, terrible treatment, not a way to be a friend at all. I don't even like to use the word friend I just, you know, I can't wait to get through the rest of this chapter because I just, I have to see where this goes. I wish I remembered the details of this chapter, but I honestly don't. And so I really just, if I could, I would just sit and read the whole chapter because this just really is a cliffhanger. This really just has me going that he has to sit here and listen to this nonsense from these three and that he entertains it, that there's this back and forth, right? But if he didn't, we wouldn't have this book. And this is really good. Um, This is really good to me. So... We will uh, have to wait and see until tomorrow. Let's see. All right, let's just, let me give you the title for tomorrow. 16, Job says friends are sorry comforters. Well, he nailed that. At least these three are. 
right? All right, so LFS spoke today. Tomorrow, Job is going to get back in the ring and he's going to respond. I can't wait to see what he's going to say. I hope he comes out swinging. But this has been awesome as usual. This book of Job has been, I'm telling you, this has not just met my expectations. This has far exceeded my expectations. I can't even say it enough. I just never thought I would get on here and read the book of Job and enjoy this book to the level that I am enjoying it. For me, and this is 42 chapters, right? For me to want to just sit down in, in one weekend and read this whole book from beginning to end, you know I have to be enjoying this. I love the Bible, but I've never said in my life that I wanted to sit and read one whole book over the course of one weekend. But that's really what I want to do. I really just want to get right through to the end of this book and see how this is going to um, turn out. So anyway, this was awesome. I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, and I pray that everyone has a wonderful day. And as usual, for those of you that are watching on YouTube at the end of the video, if you look over this shoulder, you'll see my profile picture. I ask that you tap or click on my picture and subscribe to the um, platform. If you have not, the page is called Allison Vaughn. It's my name. The link to the profile to the page rather should be in my profile on both Instagram and Facebook. Help me share the word of God with the world. I need to increase the number of people in our family as we read this and um, check out the whole thing. Check out the shorts. I believe a new short should be published today and um, we're going to continue. We'll be back tomorrow for Job chapter 16 and we're going to see what Job has to say to his quote unquote friends. All right. So everyone, grace and peace. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Love you all. And we will be back tomorrow to hear what Job has to say in response to these new insults. All right. Everyone have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. See you in the morning. Bye. Have a wonderful day, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Bye, Wendy. Talk to you later. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God is good. God is amazing. God is good. That's right. Kimberly on, on um, Facebook said God is good. God is amazing. He is awesome. Enjoy your day, everyone. Bye. See you tomorrow.